There comes a time when you find the monsters in our favorite tomes aren't up to snuff. They don't have the bite we want, or there's a niche we need filled, or we just want to finally stump that veteran know-it-all. Tweaking a monster is the usual solution, but sometimes we need to go a bit further. Thankfully, we have a wonderful balancing tool with terrible instructions. Open your textbook to page 273 to find our balancing chart. Surrounding it are out-of-order instructions that basically tell you to grab the head of the hammer and swing the handle, so how about some proper ones? Let's brew a monster and explain how each tool is used along the way. Before we begin the process, you'll need to understand the chart we'll be using for most of it. The first two columns are CR and Proficiency. Proficiency will inform nearly everything in some way. It starts at plus two, raising by one at level five, and every four levels passed. Personally, I start with a CR in mind, as I'm usually making this with a purpose, but I recommend at least choosing one of the four level tiers to streamline the process. Next comes the Defensive and Offensive CR. Where your AC and HP fall on this chart will determine your Defensive CR. For every two AC your rating moves from CR standard, the HP range moves by one in the other direction. So 13 AC and 90 HP make you CR2, but so does 15 AC and 80 HP, or 17 and 60. The offensive CR is similar. Instead of AC and HP, we use the attack bonus of our standard attack with the average damage output if everything hits. If you mostly rely on effects like a dragon's breath weapon, you'll use the saving throw DC instead of the attack bonus. Plus 3 to hit with 20 damage average is CR2. So is plus 1 with 26 damage and a DC 11 effect with 26 damage. Average your offensive and defensive CR to get your overall CR. So an overall CR2 monster could be 2 and 2, or 1 and 3, or a quarter and 4. One thing to mention is that when we are looking at this CR, we are looking at the effect effective numbers. These are the stats after all modifiers are in play, including some special ones that don't appear in the stat block. The easiest way to explain that is just by doing it, so let's make an example. This is the basic monster stat block, just not filled in. We'll start with the basic things you probably already know. We'll name it Bormageddon, Swine of Vengeance. Size determines how much space it and its effects take up and influence a few niche things like whether certain spells affect it. It's mostly just thematic, so we'll go with large. The manual covers monster types on page 6. If you're unfamiliar, you'll want to take a look. Each type has some unspoken standards, but the only one that's actually enforced is that a larger, larger humanoid is a giant, unless it's big through mutation or magic. After that, comes alignment. If it acts on instinct instead of sapient thought, put unaligned. Otherwise, just list whatever's most common for the species, or whatever this particular individual is. Now, this is going to be controversial, but the next step is not ability scores. Have a general vibe in your head, but they are the least important part of this process. Look, you're making a monster here, not a character. They follow different rules. So ignore the book wanting you to bounce back and forth and make like five runs at this thing. I want you to think about what you want from it. What CR, at least generally, do you need this to be? Do you have any ideas for abilities? Write them down now, numbers not needed. Then we pick a side. You'll settle into your own style, but I usually find it easiest to start with offense. Most monsters have a basic form of attack, like a slash or a bite. They're calculated like the player stats, so proficiency plus modifier. That's from the casting stat for a spell attack, strength or dex for weapons. What damage die you use doesn't matter, though if it's a standard weapon, I'd recommend using that weapon's dice as a base and scaling the amount further size. If there's a lingering effect, like poison, assume the victim fails their save twice. If it affects an area, like a cone or everything within 10 feet, assume two people are within range. The save DC for effects is 8 plus proficiency plus modifier. Which modifier is up to you? Do what makes sense. A caster could use a mental stat, a poison stat might be key to their con, a knockdown to their strength, etc. Now that we know the sources for the creature's damage, we can start deciding on the modifiers and ability scores that go with them. Personally, I start with the damage of AoE attacks, recharge moves, and just whatever I expect the big outputs to be. Figure out where that is within the range, and then move to passive damage and basic attacks to get it where you need to be. Assume every attack hits every round, tweak your damage and hit rates as needed, and there's your offensive CR for a basic creature. For the rest, there are two other factors we need to take into account. First is anything that can't be used every round. We assume recharge moves only go off once because effective damage is the average over three rounds. Bormageddon has a stampede of ghost boar, and assuming it catches two people, that's 84 damage. The next two rounds will have to rely on our basic attack, so add together and divide by three for 49. But what if a buff isn't a recharge, it's just tricky to pull off? Well, for that, we'll turn to page 280 and 281. Here we'll find a list of different monster abilities and how they change your stats. Sometimes you'll come up with something new and have to think outside the box, but most of the time you'll find something similar in the book. 
These are some of those invisible modifiers I talked about earlier. You won't change your stat block, but you'll add these in when you're looking at the chart. The charge ability says to add the damage listed for one round. We won't change our stats on the sheet, but when we're doing our formula, we'll add that 14 damage in, bringing our total to 51. With DC 16 and our stampede, that puts our offensive rating at 8. Word of caution, assume damage abilities go off once per combat if there's a catch to using it. If there was only one creature with an ability when they wrote the manual, like the Orcs Aggressive or the Gnoll's Rampage, they just wrote down the number for that particular creature if used once per combat. The charge ability says to add the damage listed for one attack, but all the monsters at the time only use the listed attack once per round. The boar can use it twice, so it's best to count it twice. This puts us at 56 damage per round, still keeping us at CR 8. Now that all that's over, time for the far easier defense. We're actually going to skip AC and HP for now. This is the land of modifiers. Most remaining things on this block have a chart or listing that will change our outcome. The easiest thing to do is get our entire formula before we start trying to solve for variable. So, going down the list. 20 to 40 is the standard for ground speeds. Take a look at similar monsters if you want movement examples, but more importantly, look at your actions. Plus 2 effective AC if you have a ranged attack and your fly speed is CR 10 or under. And that's overall CR, not offensive or defensive. You'll get that a lot in this step, it's why we chose our CR at the beginning. Anyway, saving throws are things your monster has natural skill in. You can shore up a weakness that you gave it to balance something, or just prove an exceptional strength. 1 or 2 won't affect anything, 3 to 4 give you an effective plus 2 AC, anything more is effective plus 4. I'd be sparing with these though, few great worm have more than 4 of these. Skill proficiencies are similar, but they don't affect Sierra at all, just pick what feels right. Vulnerabilities are rare, and only two creatures have more than one in all the books combined. Cut your effective HP in half if you have three or more, but I'd recommend just not. Just lower the actual HP and note upon resistances if your monster is that weakness dependent. Resistance to immunity and damage is fairly common. If you have more than two, take a look at the chart on page 277. Immunity to a condition, on the other hand, doesn't matter to CR, just give it what makes sense. Constructs can't usually be poisoned, the eyeless can't be blind, Blinded, and nothing frightens Bormageddon. Senses don't matter for CR, but definitely add flavor and are important depending on where your creature lives. Passive Perception is 10 plus Wisdom, add that skill bonus if you gave it one. Languages are self-explanatory, but remember that understands but can't speak is an option. So is Telepathy, which can just be flashes of images and feelings if they don't understand a language. Finally, turn to page 280 and 281, checking any abilities that might help your monster avoid damage. In our case, Relentless increases our effective HP. That's the end of our modified so now it's finally time to find that AC and HP. AC is 10 plus dex plus natural armor. You'll want to stay correct on actual armor and assume that things with mage armor already have a cast. Natural armor has general trends, but honestly, you'll find the designers are pretty loose with this one. Just pick a number that feels right, we'll tweak it if we need to after finding our HP. The hit dice you'll use is based on the monster's size, chart on page 276, and you add your con as normal. Decide on what modifier you need here, but again, we're going off the feel of the creature. A creature the size of your hand might have 1 hit dice, or 10, or 32. Those are taken from the monsters in your manual. This is why I save the scores, and defensive stats in general, until the end. The rules are loosest here. Now we figure out where we want to be and work backwards. We want CR 7 and our offensive was CR 8, so we need CR 5 or 6. Our effective HP is 16, which is only one higher than our baseline, so our effective HP needs to be between 131 and 160. We're large, so a d10 hit die, plus our con modifier breaking us to 9.5 average. So 9.5 times some number plus 14 multiplied by 1.5 thanks to our resistance. We just have to solve or cheat. Personally, I just plug numbers into the formula that be right until I brute force the solution. But the quick way is to just choose a number in the range. 150 is in range, divided by 1.5 for 100, minus 14 is 86, divide by 9.5 and we get 9.05, so 9 hit dice. This sounds complicated, but it can be done in seconds in the search bar of your browser, at the downside of doing algebra. Either way though, we're done. Take your offensive and defensive CRs, average them, and that's what you landed on. Tweak anything if it doesn't feel right, but otherwise just bail out any remaining ability scores and plug in that CR. Now I know that probably felt like it took a while, your first monster always will, but most monsters don't have half the things I mentioned, and this gets so much quicker and easier with practice. Once it clicks, you can make something basic in minutes, I promise. And if not, just take poor Mageddon. It's in the description. It's not like your friends know me, I have 16 subs. Maybe make that bigger? I do keep throwing out monsters. Either way, once you've gotten this down and you want to step up your game, consider a few more things. 
Add in their actions and legendary actions. You balance them the same way we did the rest of the actions. They radically change how a monster feels, even if you don't make them any stronger than you normally would. I challenge you to at least add one of those to a normal existing monster. It's good practice, even if it's something as simple as a basic attack or moving or using an item. But if you have a creative knack, you can give most things a home turf advantage. Plants lash out to entangle creatures on a dryad's turf. The priestess calls her god and sets everything on fire. Their actions can make even the weakest monsters feel special. Second, when you're more experienced, start examining monster stats as you read them. You'll notice some interesting trends. Like how dragons have a bonus to strength, con, wisdom, and child by adulthood, and a few skills as well, typically arcana and stealth. Devils resist one element and mundane weapons, while demons ignore or resist cold, fire, lightning, and often poison. Monster standards didn't go away, they just stopped writing them down. Giving something its usual traits can amp up a monster, especially if you're trying to publish it. People don't usually know the standards consciously, but they know the general feel in play. Also, think critically when you're designing for a specific party instead of a general release. Why does a monster with a ranged attack and a flight speed get a plus two to their AC? Well, because it's ensuring something stays at a melee while still attacking. Reaction teleportation, fast swimming underwater, the area you design these in, plenty of things can accomplish the same thing. They refuse to tell us most of their reasoning, but we can still figure it out with a little thought. In fact, we have to. Shaking the book and screaming never seems to work. Finally, be careful with how you reach the offensive CR. Choose multiple attacks over one big attack unless it's really necessary. This is partially to stop it wasting around on a miss, but it's good to have the option of turning the rest of the attack on someone still standing. Average damage shouldn't kill a full health character of that level outright. In fact, it's pretty rare for something to drop a frontline fighter in one hit. There are exceptions, but it's typically epic things like niches. Well, that in really low-level stuff, specifically wormlings, but that's just level one for you. My point is, don't make individual attacks so strong that they're just delete player buttons. It never is as fun as it sounds. Anyway, that's all I have for now, and I already said to like and follow, so bye!